In this video, we talk about a very simple example of an application of affine varieties. Um, it's just an application to robotics involving a robot arm. Um, this is a very simple example, um, but it's just, um, I'm just creating this video so that you can see um, sort of what's coming in terms of applications of affine varieties um, to other fields. Um, there are many applications of affine varieties to robotics, and there's an entire chapter in this book devoted to it, chapter six, um, robotics and automatic uh, geometric theorem proving. And that's from the book Ideals, Varieties, and Algorithms by Cox, Little, and O'Shea that I'm outlining for you in these videos. Um, so uh, just as a simple example, let's say you have um, a robot arm in the plane. So we're just in two-dimensional space, and uh, it consists of two linked, linked rods. Of lengths uh, one and two. So let's say the first um, robot arm has a length of, or the first part of the arm has a length of two, and that that point where it, it can pivot from, um, we're going to call the point x y. And then there's another part of the arm that's only one unit long. And we'll call the location of that point uh, ZW. And I'm just using those variable, variables, excuse me, because those are the variables um, provided in our book. Well, if we want to know the state of the arm, like that's just describing where that um, arm is in the two dimensional um, space that we're interested in in the plane. Um, well, we can easily. Uh, describe all the possible locations of this point x, y, um, because we know that um, we have placed that initial point at the origin, and that point x, y could, could vary along a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. Um, so let's see. Let, let me write all of this down. The state of the arm. It's the coordinates could be completely described by the coordinates of x, y, or the coordinates x, y, and uh, z, w. As shown in the figure, if you know what, what x, y is, and you know what z, w is, you know what the arm looks like in the x, y plane. Um, so putting those together, we can think of the state, the state um, of the arm as an, a four-tuple. We've got an X, a Y, and we've got a Z and a W. And each of those is a real number. So this is in a four-dimensional affine space where the uh, field is the set of all real numbers R. Well, it's pretty easy to see um, that I can come up with an equation describing the location x, y, and I can come up with an equation describing the location uh, z, w. Um, the equation describing the location of x, y, um, well, that would just be the equation of a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. So we'd have x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals the radius squared. That would be one equation that has to be satisfied by this. And this ZW, um, well, it can vary. Its location can vary depending on where XY is. Um, this ZW can be at any point that's exactly one unit away from XY because you can imagine this little guy turning all the way around. So um, ZW uh, is specified by an equation. Um, the location of ZW is defined by a point on a circle of radius one with its center not at zero, zero, but with its center at x, y. So we would have z minus x squared plus 
um, w minus y squared equals um, the length of that uh, arm or like length of that little piece uh, squared. So that's one. And of course we could take these and we could rearrange them. So we have x squared plus y squared minus four equals zero. And you could expand that if you want to, but it's not necessary. You have z minus x squared plus w minus y squared minus one equals, whoops, minus one equals zero. And then you can see that um, the state of the arm is completely described by this variety given by this polynomial equation and this polynomial equation. And so if you know something about this variety, which is the set of all points x, y, uh, z, and w, such that this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero, then you actually know all the possible states of this arm. Now, we made it really simple by restricting ourselves to the plane. So we're forcing this arm to stay in the x, y plane. Um, but we could just as easily have had an arm uh, or we can have a robot arm in three-dimensional space rather than two-dimensional space. If we have one rod here and one rod here, and this has length two and this has length one, but now instead of being forced to stay in the plane, we can be in three-dimensional space, well then I would end up on a sphere of radius two centered at the origin for this piece. And then I would be on a, a tiny, a smaller sphere of radius one um, for this piece. So rather than having a state of the arm described in um, by a, a variety involving uh, four variables. So it would be, so the solution set would be a set of points in four dimensional affine space uh, where the field is a set of real numbers. If we were talking about three dimensional space, um, well, this would be in terms of X, Y, and Z. And this would also be in terms of Z, W, and um, some sixth variable. So we would be in six dimensional space um, and you, if you're saying to yourself, oh, what does six dimensional space look like? Don't worry about what it looks like. Understand that the math is gonna work out just fine, but we could write down a couple of equations that would easily describe um, the location of this, this sort of pivot point and the location of this point um, with two equations um, in six unknowns. Um, so the variety would live in R6 it would consist of points in R6 rather than points in R4. Um, so that's a simple example. Um, there's a lot of important um, applications of affine varieties and um, algebraic geometry to robotics. And I don't think I'm going to do a series of videos on chapter six. Um, it's not really my interest. I'm interested in uh, vortex dynamics, which is really more about projective space and um, the projective algebraic geometry that's covered in chapter eight. So I'm probably gonna skip chapter six, but if you're interested in that, let me know and maybe I can do a video series on um, chapter six as well. Um, I think it's, it's pretty interesting, um, but um, I'm trying to get to projective space so that I can look at some of the, um, the numbers of solutions um, to the vortex. Um, vortex statics equations um, that are related to Bezout's theorem and uh, algebraic geometry and projective space. So um, I'll probably skip this, um, but let me know if you're interested in it and I could do some videos on that as well.